The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And welcome to the Factor on Censored. It's heartbreaking and we've seen it happen time and time again. Domestic violence takes the lives of four people in Cypress Wood just outside of Houston, including a four year old girl. Now, investigators say a man killed his estranged wife, his mother in law and his daughter before killing himself this morning. Unfortunately, police say there have been other incidents of violence at that home. But what else do you expect from abuser? And now is not the time to be quiet. If you see something, say something. You know, murder suicides involving family violence and domestic violence are nothing new in our wheelhouse. Uh, we say something in our movement, and that is when it's predictable, it's preventable. So here there were some predictors. There was a process of getting divorced. There was a history of stalking, according to police. So we know that there was a there were signs that things weren't well. And what we know is leaving can be the most dangerous time and can result in awful tragedies like that. We know that in eight out of 10 murder suicides, the victim was in the process of leaving. Uh, there was a separation. That is a predictor. And what do we tell people? If you're in an abusive relationship, you're navigating it, just know that there is help out there. There are resources. You can call us, other domestic violence agencies, toll free, 24 seven, just to know what your options are. We have something called safety planning, Isaiah. That's so mm -hmm. important to plan for your safety because most survivors who turn into victims who are six feet under have no idea that they're in a really dangerous situation. There was a gun in the house. You are five times more likely to die if there's a history of abuse and there is a gun in the house. So in this case, if it's predictable, it's preventable. And now we've got this, an awful tragedy once again in our community. And we heard from one of our reporters at Fox that he at some point tried to drown the child, the four year old or the little girl involved or the child involved in this incident, a child that he killed as well, but tried to drown this child well before. Now, child, that begs the, the next question. If you're leaving and if you have an abuser and you're getting out of that relationship, is the best option for you to disappear for a while so this person cannot find you, this nut cannot find you with a gun and take your life. Well, we know there are options. That's where that uh, uh, safety plan is so important. It's not necessarily one size fits all. It depends on where are your kids? Do you have your passports? There's a myriad of things on the checklist that can help you decide how best to plan for your safety. I mean, we see it at the Houston Area Women's Center, clients who come to us, survivors who are fleeing abuse, who have to uh, be in hiding for a while in some cases, just to make sure that they're safe, protective orders, you know, getting the legal system involved. There are a myriad of things to decide whether or not you need to be in hiding, stay at a family member's. It really depends on, on the situation and how uh, violent and dangerous it can be. Now, if you're sharing a child with someone like this and they're making demands, well, at least let me see my child. How do you deal with that when you know they are unstable mentally and they could harm that child as well? And would the courts be willing to step in and say, no, you cannot see this child because of your history? You know, kids come first, that's a saying, right? Kids are um, the unintentional weapon of often in cases of abuse, abuse, they're weaponized. Maybe an abuser says, I'm gonna take my child, I'm gonna take your child or you can't afford it. Those are the kinds of threats that our clients can hear oftentimes. There are avenues for support. We have a legal advocacy team that can help clients navigate things like the criminal justice system, uh, protective orders, making sure that children are safe. I think courts um, always bend to the side of the children and their safety, their safety comes first, the mom's safety comes first. We say mom because oftentimes abuse is, is exacted against women. 90% of our clients identify as women with children, many of them with children. So safety is first. I think the important thing for survivors who are watching your show tonight need to know is that there is help. 
There are hotlines. There's a live chat. There's toll free numbers. Get help. Try to learn and just, you know, arm yourself with as much information and, and access to safety planning as possible. And of course, you know, there had to be family members and friends out there. When you, as a family member or a friend, and you witness the abuse or whether it's mental or physical, now is not the time for you to keep your mouth closed. What should that family member or friend do if they witness the abuse either verbally or physically? What role can they play? Well, you shouldn't keep your mouth closed if somebody's being hurt, right? We, we talk about something called recognize, respond, and refer. Recognize the signs of abuse. Maybe the survivor's isolating. She's telling you about you know, threats, humiliation, verbal abuse, financial abuse, all those things. You know, recognize those signs of abuse. Respond. Don't keep your mouth closed. Don't say judgmental things like you should leave them. It's not helpful. It isolates a, a survivor. Mm -hmm. Respond with, with, uh, with empathy. You didn't deserve this. I can't believe you're going through this. I'm really sorry this is happening. Those are the kinds of words that, that comfort survivors, that let them know that they're not alone. And then finally, finally, and I can't stress this enough, refer, tell them that help is available. There are resources out there where they can get help and not end up six feet under like we're seeing right now. For those who need help, where can they find you here in Houston? Uh, if they're trying to get that plan together to escape, to get away from a relationship? All it takes is one phone call or get on our internet, hawc.org. We have a live chat option where survivors, if they don't feel safe getting on the phone, they can talk to one of our counselors. We have a hotline 24-7-713-528-2121. Always uh, be encouraged to reach out because help is available and you are not alone. And really quick, child, before we go, the question always comes up for the, the victim of abuse. What if I can't afford it? I don't have any money. Can I still reach out to your organization? We are free and confidential and we keep it that way. We get it from the support of our community. Uh, money should not be a barrier to accessing life saving services. All right, child, when Houston Area Women's Center, always good to see you here on the Factor Uncensored with that valuable advice.